In this video we're going to take a look at selecting and editing a sub D with a primary focus on the Dynabar options. Uh, there's also a toolbox but we'll look at that in a separate video uh, mainly just to break the videos up because otherwise it'd be very very long. So let's start by creating a basic uh, cube sub D and I'm going to put on some symmetry here, put on in Z and hit U. So now let's go to edit sub D and there's our sub D in all its glory if it wasn't already selected, then I would come over with my cursor. It uh, does a ball line select and goes green. And then when I click the button, it selects it ready for editing. And you can see we have the cage and the sub D model inside. And then the blue plane is the symmetry plane. So now let's start to look at some of these options we have down here on the Dynabar. First, we have uh, by default, we have the green arrow select move activated and I can select in this case an edge, move the edge, and because symmetry is on, both edges are moving. I can select a point, move the point around. I can select a face, and move the face around. <clears throat> you can also control select, so select for example um, opposite points, and then move those. Or a mixture of points and edges and in this case it pretty much is the same as um, pick an entire face. Another thing we can do when we are selecting points is a window select so I can just come out into a broader area go to select hold down my uh, button on the stylus and do a window select so you see it's got those two points uh, if I just clicked out to deselect those come to a side view then what I could do is select all those four points on that one face on the side just by doing a window select and then that allows me to then grab those and start moving those around so that's just a simple window select now we can also put on the inchworm the precise movement and that works as normal same as if we're manipulating clay we can also switch on the axis snap so let's grab an edge and then with inchworm also on, let's turn the inchworm off. We'll see a much more rapid motion. And I can pull off that and follow the dog leg back onto the axes, etc. Now, another thing we can do here, let's undo some of those changes back to the, the basic. Uh, the next icon along is uh, 3D rotation. So let's switch that on, pick a face. And then in the middle of the face, I'm just going to click and hold the button down. So I can feel the face, click and hold the button down, twist, and you'll see that we're twisting. And because we've got symmetry switched on, the whole thing is twisting. Now, uh, if I grabbed that face and an edge with a control, and then click and hold, you see it's now rotating around the edge. If I hold control to deselect the edge, and keep control down and select a point and now click now we're rotating around that point and if I hold the alt key down then that unlocks the uh, the normal rotation and you can start to get uh, a little bit dramatic in your rotations so you can move and rotate all at the same time very free and fluid so that was 3D rotation. The next icon along is view locked rotation. So if we come to a front view, just hit F2, and then select the, pl the plane again. This time, the rotation is locked to the view. And again, if you hold the Alt key, you get a freer rotation and movement, but it's still locked to the view. Let's rotate it so you can see what's happened there. Let's undo those. And then the next one along is Twist Hinge. Twist Hinge, select the face, and if I select, you see it's twisting around that point. But if I also select a, an edge, and now do Twist Hinge, you see it's actually rotating the face around that line, around that edge. Let's undo that, go back to Normal Select. Now those are all the 3D rotations. Now let's come and take a look at adding a loop. When you add a loop, you can click on an a edge, 
click and hold down the stylus button and you see that a new loop is added and I can dynamically before I let go of the the stylus button move that around and put it exactly where I want it so this is just a really quick way of like uh, adding a little bit more control towards the edges and getting a more of a straight form in the middle and if you do it with symmetry on you can see that it's appearing both sides of the symmetry plane so here we just really quickly added um, three or four more new leaps and we've got more of a cubic sort of thing with uh, much smaller rounds as opposed to a very um, smooth shape at the beginning. We can also add an edge so let's add a loop in here and now let's look what happens when we add an edge Well, I can just click and click and it actually breaks down and adds a new face in there and then I could come back select just that edge for example and move just that edge around so it gives me a little bit more localized control now when I'm adding that edge when I get to the middle of one of these edges you see the uh, the dot goes yellow and it snaps to the middle and it also snaps to a 75 and a 25 percent so I can go to the middle middle very quickly and it's just a, a good way of um, breaking up in a very controlled way the faces and then again we can grab that middle face push, pull, push and pull that middle face around and get more localized control now one thing that's kind of nice when we're pushing these faces around uh, whenever we get close to another face and in this case you see that we have symmetry switched on when they get close to each other we get this message which says join nearby faces and if you hit yes we spin you see it's actually joined those faces and created a loop a hole in the middle of our our little model there now if you didn't want to join that just hit no and you'd end up with a very thin um, area between those two faces now another thing we can do is add faces uh, we can manually draw faces so let's undo some of this and you select, select on the top and just hit the delete key and it deletes that one face and opens everything up so now I have an open sub D as opposed to a closed sub D so what I can do with add faces is start picking my points and you see this red rubber band come out and all I'm doing is selecting the four and as soon as you come back to the first one it closes off and selects and draws a whole face for you now if you have a loop, you can just click on the loop, click again, and it manually does it again. So that's how we would add a face manually. We can also extrude faces. So let's undo this back. Now, when I extrude a face, by default the scale is set to 100%. So I can grab this face, and as I start extruding, you see it's just really adding a new face for me. Now if I take the extrude scale down to 50% for example, you see it's getting much smaller. And let me undo that because I actually have an add corners on here. Let me turn off the add corners and redo the 50% and you'll see what happens. See the new face that it's adding is 50% the size of the old face. Just as you can go down, you can also go up. So if I make it 200%, you see it's much bigger. Now when you add that face at 50% we also have the option of adding a corner so now this time when I add the face you see it first like offsets in those mitered corners and then lets me extrude out the new face so once again if I undo that turn corners off it adds a new face but we have like a diagonals so we're getting a smooth, uh, a smooth addition of that face. Or when I add the corners, it mitres in and then adds the face. So now let's take a look at when we are extruding a new face, what does the fuse adjacent do? So I've gone back to the, the basic sphere. I'll add um, a couple more. One, 
two, three. Let's add one more, four. And now I can select, go back to select, select these faces, go back to extruding a face, and let's put the extrude scale down to 50%. So now when I uh, come and extrude these faces, you see we had three new faces. Each of those original faces is broken down to 50% and added a new face. But if I put on Fuse Adjacent and then do the same thing again, you see it's actually merged them all together and we now have one, uh, it's exactly more like one face as opposed to three individual faces. And then just one last trick to show you with um, extruding a face. I will pick this one, add, add. Now I add in this direction, add one more. And now start adding towards the mirror. And again, as soon as it gets close to the mirror, it says, do you want to join the, near the nearby faces? Hit yes, and it nicely joins them up for you. So that was a really quick introduction to what the Edit Sub D Diner Bar options do. And then the next video, we'll take a look at the toolbox in, a, in more detail.